and you're going back up again. Because you're thinking, I can demonstrate how to make a banana split without reading anything. Why do I have to read anything? And why do I have to learn APA? This is ridiculous. I'm, and I don't know if I can do it. Okay, that's what happens after today. This, is, this always happens in this course. Then, when you give speech to, even though it's a graded speech, your anxiety goes down again, and then it goes down further when we get to three, four, five, six, and seven, until at the end of the course, we have nothing good but joy and gladness. Now, you may not believe me. I can tell from your, your facial expressions that you're not too sure, except for Kevin and Annette and Jamie. But this is actually what's going to happen. You just have to sort of grin and, grin and bear it, grit your teeth, and go, go along with it. Okay, now, are there questions about why you're going to read, what you're going to read, or how you're going to show what you've read? and talk about it. All right, that being the case, we get to another fun thing. Going back to a speech as an iceberg. You have now learned why reading can be a powerful and valuable component of your preparations for speech. Then the question is, why is talking here, and what do I mean by that? Okay. <laughs> there are various ways for me to introduce this. Do you want me to just tell you what you're going to have to do, or do you want me to give you background? No, just, just tell us. Just sock it to you, huh? Yeah. Okay, that's, that's my Monday, Wednesday, 8 o'clock class, ready to take it as it is. What you're going to do for all of your speeches, 2 through 7, is you're going to interview at least one person whom you don't know prior to each speech. And complete an assessment of a student's community interview form, which you will submit with your speech materials. Is that a form? Is that again? The form is an assessment of a student's community interview. There are hard copies available over here on the bottom shelf, the second, second row here. Big, fairly good sized stack here. So, you want to point to yeah, anyway. pass them around. Yes. Yeah. I would say take one now, although you're eventually going to need six at least. Rina. So, so do we have to do that interview mm -hmm. or? Mm -hmm. Doing our speech too? Mm -hmm. Before the speech, yeah. So, what is so we should have one done right now for speech one? No, no, no. There were, it was not required. That's why I said it's for two through seven. So if you're doing a food demonstration, would you do interview somebody in a restaurant? I mean, mm -hmm. okay. Very good question. Carla, do you have a similar question? Kind of, because, like, see that one says chicken salad sandwich. Yes. Somebody demonstrated that. Yes. So, who are you going to interview about a chicken salad sandwich? Very good question, Jamie. <laughs> I know this is funny, but what if um, I walk up to a classmate that I've never met, I just know that they're in my class, and I said, hi, I'm Jamie, and I'm conducting a speech next week, and I ask you a couple questions, and I tell them about my speech, and what do you think? Do you think I'm going to do a good job, or what do you think about this topic? Is that what you're looking for? So that's like one that? possibility, yes. Very, very good question. Okay, that's my question. Okay. okay. Now, let me, let me go back to the diagram which I drew before to try to make the rationale clear here. Remember, this was your good speech. Maybe this is your very good speech because now you have readings that you're going to mention. Right? Because that will liven things up. When Sean's doing a speech on cutting hair, he will not only be able to show us how to cut hair, which is great, we learn how to do that, but he will also give us information about why certain groups of people get haircuts more than others, and how often they do it, how much the average haircuts cost, which ethnic groups pay the most for haircuts. Yes, go ahead. Will any of the information in the interview, do we have to put that information in our speech? No. Okay. Well, let's get to that. Okay. 
going back to the why, because I don't want to just tell you what to do and how to do it, but the, the why is you have a good speech with good reading, even though you didn't think until this morning that readings would make any difference, but they can. Then you do your interview. <coughs> The number of exclamation points depends only on your ingenuity. There can be almost an infinite number of exclamation points depending on whom you interview and what information you get from the person you interview. So let, let me start big here and then I'll go down to Jamie and Carla's question and also Amanda. Let's think big. You know how many people there are in the world? Yeah, I think they, they said the seventh, seventh billion person has also been born. So okay, okay. about seven billion people. Now. All right. Are there, if you could meet any of those people, are there any that you would like to meet? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Okay. Now, and I'm sure there are. Some of those people might be famous, some of them might be influential, some of them might be handsome or beautiful. Some of them might be able to help you with getting a job after you, after you complete your studies at Clover Park. Some of them might be potential dates or mates or friends, right? Some of them might just have information that you'd like to know, right? So if you start thinking big first and consider that there are lots of people in the world that you probably would like to meet, lots of kinds of people you'd like to meet, then this activity among other things can be an answer to your prayers or your wishes your desires because there are people that you would like to meet that you have not met because you just didn't think there was any reason to meet them or you've been you just haven't thought about it right in some cases now if you proceed with this process in such a way that you meet someone that you care about and learn from who can help you with your speech, so much the better. In, yes, Cece? Can this person be a former instructor? They need to be a stranger. A stranger? Oh. Yes. Oh. Now, when I mentioned this a couple of years ago... Stranger danger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. <laughs> yeah, stranger danger. When I mentioned this in class a couple of years ago, a woman said, but Dr. Venditti, I don't know any strangers. Oh my goodness. I don't know any strangers. Okay, Th that's, that's the definition of stranger, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, it should be someone you don't know. So you don't get to, you can interview anyone you want, just as long as one of the people is someone you don't know. Even if you've seen them before, you just don't know them. That's, that's okay. Okay. So, but but, but how think first about what you're after and then choose who you're going to interview. Okay. Okay, so we can just interview anybody. We're uh -huh. supposed to put this student speech topic. This is your speech topic. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Carla. Okay, once again, now, what <laughs> could I possibly ask somebody about chicken salad sandwich? Okay. What do you put in your right. chicken salad sandwich? Okay. Okay. How would you ask okay. somebody? Glad you raised the question again. Let me talk about it. <laughs> In other, words, in, other words, <laughs> in other words, how can you add exclamation points to something that you already know everything about? It's the same, the, the answer is similar to the answer that I gave about the reading. How can you add exclamation points to something you already know about by reading? It's by choosing whom you interview in such a way that they will be able to enliven and enrich your speech. So let's talk about that. I think if I walk up to a stranger and say, okay. Well, remember, it's not just any stranger. You get to pick what stranger it is. Yeah, but they might think I lost my mind. <laughs> I know. I was thinking so. Yeah, like so yeah, you, this, this calls. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is scared of the Clover Park Technical College has four core abilities that it wants all of you to achieve, right? Remember those? Yes. Talk about those? They're on the back bulletin board that you read in the first week. Right there. Over there. First one is communication. You're learning that in the class. Second one is critical thinking and problem solving. This activity is meant to be critical thinking and problem solving. So if you decide, oh, I'm going to go to Pacific Avenue at 
3 a.m. on a Saturday night oh and just see whom I can talk to. <laughs> Whoa! And that's not that uh, that's not demonstrating critical thinking and problem solving. Depends on what your topic is. Depends on what your topic is. If your topic is getting mugged, then there you go. Target <laughs> population. Ian's well, got a point there. Yeah. It all depends on what you're after. So if your topic were built, making a chicken salad sandwich, whom do you suppose you might interview? A chef. A chef. A chef. Going to the Rainbow Room. <laughs> or someone at the, at the Rainier Room Rainier across the street. Room. Yeah. That's what Rena. So <laughs> this topic and uh, regarding the in, uh, person that we're going to interview, it's basically gathering uh, the different, different idea, right? Mm -hmm. Further ideas. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, different or further, yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But there are two she ways you can see. use an interview. Okay. One is to get new information that you didn't already have. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to demonstrate how to make a chicken salad sandwich, you don't know everything there is in the world about chicken salad sandwiches. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Go to, go to a restaurant. Yeah. Ask the chef there. What do they do that makes their chicken salad sandwich special? And they'll say, yes. well, I shouldn't really tell you this, but it's a mixture of curry powder and paprika. That's nice, isn't it, to know? No. Mm -hmm. So then when you give your speech, you're not required to mention it, but wouldn't it make your speech more interesting if you could say, when I went to Applebee's and talked to Gina Schmina over there, who went to the Chicken Salad Sandwich Institute of America for five years, <laughs> she told me that, it's that paprika and curry powder will add to your chicken salad sandwich. So you can do that. Now. I would guess that there's nobody here who knows everything there is to know about what you're going to demonstrate. You may know how to do what you're going to show us very well, but you still don't know everything about it. You don't know about the history of it. You don't know about where it's done besides here. You don't know lots of things about it. But let's say you think you know everything you possibly need to know for a five to seven minute speech, because it's going to be a five to seven minute speech. Then there's one other way you can use the, the interview. <sighs> this is what Jamie was talking about. He said, can you go to somebody and tell them I'm doing a speech on chicken salad sandwiches? Would you mind looking at my outline to see what you think of this? Okay. So <coughs> in that time, this could be a particularly good thing for someone who's going to demonstrate a topic that is specialized, <coughs> that is scientific or technological. Because when you do a demonstration speech, you need to be sure that everything you say is understandable to your audience. If it isn't, you're not going to get all your points for argumentation and mm. organization. Because it's a matter of clarity. It's a matter of communicating, right? So for instance, Say you're demonstrating something that has to do with computers, right? And you're going to demonstrate how to remove, I don't know what that is, you're going to remove and replace the hard drive. Actually, that's probably a DVD, I don't know what that is. No, I think that's hard drive. This is a hard drive. That's the DVD. That's the DVD player up This is the DVD. Hard drive is down there below. There you go. Okay, so you're going to demonstrate how to remove it and replace a hard drive. So you start talking about the nine pin connector and the SCSI port and stuff like this, pretty soon your audience is going, they're getting that Mego look. You've heard of Mego? M-E-G-O, my eyes glaze over, <laughs> Mego. So they don't understand. Now, if you were talking to a group of fellow computer students, this would not be an issue. They would follow everything easily. You could do your readings, everything would be fine. But if you're talking to a group of lay people who are not familiar with computers, you're going to mystify them. So for the second kind of interview, 